Hello there. I am just now putting my hat on for those that watch on YouTube. Um, pretty much just sweated, I think, for the last uh, two and a half to almost three hours at this point. Um, what a freaking game between the Penguins and the Islanders. Chaotic, as always. Um, you know, outside, I think, of Penn's caps. Uh, there are not, you know, more chaotic games the Penguins will play against um, than the New York Islanders. Um, and this one would certainly qualify. I have a full game recap coming up right after this drop. We're going to get into everything that happened in this game. The pathetic shootout attempts, the pathetic overtime power play, almost losing on an empty net in overtime, the giveaways from Brian Dumoulin, um, everything in between. That's all coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to a late night edition of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Of course, I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. And of course, thank you all so much for making this your first listen of the day. Whether you're listening late Tuesday night or, or early Wednesday morning, I'm going to count that um, as well. And then, of course, we are going to have an episode on Wednesday and hopefully do a crossover, I think, with Gil Martin. Adam Gretz is going to come on the show on Thursday afternoon. I'm going to have that up for you all right after that. Uh, and then I'll have a full game recap for Friday, especially if the Penguins do clinch their playoff berth. Um, on Thursday night against the Islanders, but they were close tonight to clinching that playoff berth. Was not able to happen. They fall five to four in a shootout to um, New York on Long Island, and um, you know, I, I really don't know where to start. Um, you know what? Let's just get you know the, the really bad stuff out of the way, and that starts with the shootout. Um, you know, I wish I could say I was surprised watching the Penguin skaters do the same thing time after time after time. Has anyone here listened to, you know, round and round by rat? Um, you know, if you, if you're a hardcore, you know, rock fan from the eighties or something, um, you know, I listen to music like that, even though I wasn't even alive at the time. Um, that, that, that is basically describes, you know, what the penguins have been doing in a shootout this season round and round. What comes around goes around are part of the lyrics. And, it's it's the same three garbage attempts. Cindy, Jake Gensel comes in, basically glides, shoots glove side. Oh, easy save. Sorokin doesn't have to move. Oh, Cindy Crosby comes in. Oh, maybe he'll do go five hole. Maybe he'll do a little deke. No, nope, comes in, glides, stops, goes glove. Saved. And then Chris Latang comes in with the cherry on top. And I should be more mad about this, but I'm not. I, I'm just laughing about it because of how pathetic it is. And he's a controller basically disconnects loses control of the puck and the game is over. And it's just like, you know, how bad are you all at shootouts that this is what it's come to? The Penguins have missed on 17 of their last 19 shootout attempts. It's that should not even be possible during the season. Seven of their 11 um, loser points have come via the shootout. Imagine it, it, what would have happened in overtime if the Penguins could have gotten some of those wins that did not go to a shootout. Or imagine if Mike Sullivan actually decided to change up the, the lineup in the shootout. Or imagine if the players wanted to actually make a deke or make any other kind of move so that the goalie can actually not just stand there and make e easy save after easy save. I, I tweeted this on my Twitter tonight. You see better attempts from players playing beer league games. Hell, I, what you know... I, I didn't even play, you know, that highly competitively back when I was a kid. But even in those games, you know, when you know we went to a shootout, I think for one of the playoff games I was in, I saw better attempts from you know kids my age that were like twelve or thirteen years old than I saw tonight. It was it was a joke. It was an utter disgrace. Um, thank God there are new shootouts in the playoffs, and the Penguins basically with this point tonight have almost clinched their way in uh, any kind of win on Thursday against the Islanders. Um, clinched the Penguins in, or you know, or any loss by the Islanders overall down the stretch basically puts them in um, as well. You know, th th it's that close, people, um, to say the least. Uh, but just you know, the, the Penguins deserve to lose the game based off what I saw 
in that shootout. And, you know, Casey Smith, he can only do so much. I actually like the way he played in the shootout. He came out, I think, a lot further than he did in the last one. And he was able to save, make two out of the three saves, which were really nice saves, actually. Kyle Palmieri, you know, that was picked a nice corner there. Nothing really Smith can do about that. But, you know, maybe if any of the Penguin players wanted to actually try in the shootout, you know, maybe going maybe four or five rounds. I also will say it was pretty disgraceful that Mike Sullivan did not send out Ricard Raquel, who's four for four in shootouts this year. I'm pretty positive Latang this year is like, like one for eight, one for, I, I think it's, I saw this on social media. I'm pretty sure he's one for eight on the shots this year, it's, which is pathetic um, as well. So um, that's my rant about the shootouts, you know, out of the way. I've talked about that a lot on the podcast this year. Um, just every time the Penguins lose a shootout because it's the same thing. And I know you all probably tired of me saying the same thing for the last five or six minutes now, but I just, I can't drive it home enough. You know, the Penguins just have to be better in these situations. Um, it's not good enough. Hasn't been good enough all year. I want to see that change going into the next regular season. I know, again, shootouts are not going to count um, in the playoffs when the Penguins do eventually clinch their spot. But, you know, at the end of the day, just a really disgraceful effort there, um, I think, in my opinion. Now, to the overtime. Um, again, another atrocious part of the Penguins game tonight. I have no clue what they were doing on that two-minute four-on-three power play. The, the four players are just kind of skating around. They're passing back and forth. Again, I have said this a lot on my show this year. I am not a shoot-it guy. I'm not just going to yell, shoot it, like some of these other weirdo fans at PBG Paints Arena or any other you know stadium you see with other fans. But for God's sake, you only have one shot on a four-on-three power play. It is basically a gimme almost that you're going to score in those situations. Heck, every time I usually see a, a team get a four-on-three power play in overtime, you know, about 90, 90%, 95% of the time they score. The only chance that the Penguins got, I understand, was flat-out robbery from Sorokin, which we've seen – so many times over the last year off Jake Gensel. I mean, that's a goal he probably scores, you know, eight or nine other times. But I mean, all the other the times you're just you're passing back and forth. Latang is fanning on passes. He also basically gave up a breakaway to Casey Sezikis. He did not play that well at all. Um, I'll get to Chris Latang a little bit more coming up in the next segment. And you know, it almost results in the Penguins allowing a shorthanded goal there. Um, they were lucky that the puck did not cross the goal line before the net went off its moorings. Um, it looked like from the other angle that it went in the net um, from the side, um, which obviously didn't, is not going to count. It did not count. Um, but um, Chris Latane could not have played that any worse, and he couldn't have played on the power play um, any worse either. Just a really bad performance from him. Uh, oh, I had a there for a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever done that on my show. Um, but just, there's not enough shooting. I mean, you're going to tell me with less than three minutes to go in overtime, you're not going to get more than one shot on a four on three when it's, you're, they're basically giving you the game at that point. It's not acceptable uh, to me. The Penguins should have won that game in overtime. Um, the fact that they didn't, uh, it's, it's definitely going to sting, uh, at least a little bit. I know the Penguins are going to get another shot at them on Thursday. Um, this is definitely an Islanders team. I think that's beatable. Um, but just, I definitely think the Penguins shot themselves in the foot quite a lot tonight, especially in the overtime and the shootout. So I had to start the episode with those two talking points. Um, you know, just again, not good enough by the Penguins. And that needs to, especially if they play more overtime games to year down the stretch, I know they only have seven games left. Um, just, you know, not, not a good enough effort, especially on the power play and the shootouts. If they do have another shootout in these last seven games, I don't think it's likely but, you know, who knows at this point, um, they just need to be a lot better there, um, to say the least. Coming up in the next segment, I am going to go into uh, more of Chris Letang's struggles, going to go into some of the goals that were scored tonight that really impressed me. Uh, Brian Dumoulin's bad play we're going to get to a little later on in the show. Casey Dismith's performance um, and so much more. Now. Before we get to that, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your spending stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. That is BetOnline, where the game starts. Now, 
let's get to Shady Rays. It's an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, there's something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them no matter what happened. You can give them a try, and if you also don't love them, you will pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hungry in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for the listeners, you can head to ShadyRays.com and use code LOCKEDON to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code LOCKEDON for their best deal of the season. Again, 50% off of two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. All right, we're back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. All right, done with the overtime. Um, done with the shootout. I don't want to talk about that anymore. It's just, it's just going to make me either start laughing again or it's actually going to probably start to piss me off. Um, but, <clears throat> all right, overall, Chris Letang tonight, I have not said this a lot this season, and I alluded to it um, in the last segment. He was dreadful tonight. Uh, just not a good performance. Um, again, I already said, I talked about his overtime and his shootout, um, but just was making the wrong reads in the defensive zone, was not playing well offensively, uh, making poor decisions with the puck. Um, he was basically, I think, a liability all game long. And again, for everyone that listens to this show, I do not harp on this player a lot. I think the world of him, he's had a hell of a season. I'm sure most of the fans would agree, but you know, I think most of you would also agree with me that he was pretty bad tonight. And that's unacceptable for a player um, of this caliber, especially in a game, you know, that has this much meaning. I mean, well, I shouldn't say ha- that has this much meaning because the Penguins are basically already in the playoffs, but you know, when you're still trying to win games down the stretch and you're trying to solidify your spot, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in, in, in the top eight and, you know, play who you want to play and all that. You control your own destiny. <clears throat> um, this was still not good enough from Chris Letang and it needs to change. Um, I'm sure he's going to be fine, um, on Thursday and hopefully in the playoffs and all that, but tonight, not a good performance. I'm sure he's probably gonna be kicking himself about it. I don't, I don't need to sit here and go on a massive rant about it, but just did not make good decisions all night. Um, to say the least. And also I'll piggyback off that with Brian Dumlin. I think we're reaching a point now with Dumo. Uh, folks that, <clears throat> excuse me, he might have to be benched for a few games. Um, I'm not going to say this is Jack Johnson territory, but it's pretty close with how he's playing. Um, he turned the puck over numerous times in the defensive zone. Hell, um, the Bailey goal that made it 4-3 to three in the third period. Um, it was basically a random slap shot dump in from Andy Green. Brian Dumoulin misplays it in the defensive zone, somehow goes off his stick. He had the wrong angle, goes right to Bailey, who deeks around to Smith. He had no chance on it. And it's just like, I mean, n- nice job leaving your goaltender out to dry for literally no reason at all. And it's plays like that and other plays where, you know, he's just he's giving the puck right to Islanders skaters where it's like, you know, he's he's not right right now and he needs a game or two off. I don't understand how you can scratch Marcus Pedersen, who I think has been playing fine, and, and I like Mark Friedman, but you're not going to scratch Brian Dumoulin, who's playing way worse than MP28 this, at this point. So I just I think that's just a double a weird double standard for me, at least in my opinion. So um, I think you know, especially with seven games left, and that they're virtually almost locked into a playoff spot at this point. Once they eventually do clinch, if that is on Thursday, I would start to give some time off to some of the best players down the stretch because at that point, the games really don't mean anything. I mean, they're going to be playing either in that 2-3 matchup in the Metro or they're going to be playing in that second wild card spot or the first wild card spot, whichever one um, they get. But um, I just, I, I don't get it. Um, he's been regressing for the last month now. You know, he had that really bad start to this regular season Kind of started playing a lot better. And then lately, um, you know, it's just been a tire fire for him. And, you know, it's just bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Tonight was no different. Um, it's not good enough there either, to say the least. Uh, moving on a little bit, Casey DeSmith. I think one of the biggest bright spots tonight for the Penguins. And I'm, I'm glad I actually was able to get something right on my Monday episode. 
I talked about this. I said, don't be surprised if DeSmith goes in one of these two games, potentially the third, the, the, the Tuesday one to give Tristan Jari um, almost a week off of rest because I'm sure he's going to get the start on Thursday at home against the Islanders. And Mike Sullivan did exactly that. And I thought DeSmith tonight was pretty good. Um, I know he allowed um, four goals in regulation, but I'm not really going to blame him for a lot of those four goals. Um, I know the underlying numbers will tell you that it even shrank. Um, the Islanders only had 1.52 expected goals for, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm not really going to pin a lot of those goals on DeSmith, which is, which is weird. Cause of course you can look at the underlying numbers and that should tell you a different story, but you know, it was really just the penguins barfing all over themselves. I thought in the defensive zone, I mean, they were just a tire fire with these zone exits. I mean, every play for the penguins, I think in their zone, Oh, chip off the glass out. Oh, but, but they're trying their hardest for the Islanders to not jump up, catch the puck, put it down and then keep it in the offensive zone. Th- that was literally what the penguins were doing all night long. It, they were just, disgustingly terrible um, in their own zone. And that was making DeSmith's night um, that much more difficult. You know, the Penguins go up one nothing. That's huge. You know, 1-1, one, one, um, Mark Friedman plays way too passively on Zach Grise's first goal. I'm not really going to blame DeSmith for that. It was a nice shot. But he has to jump up there a little bit and play more aggressive. Um, if he's able to do that, who knows what happens there. Maybe he breaks it up. You know, the second one, uh, Penguins give up a shorthanded goal. Chris Letang basically fumbles the puck at the point. Jake Ensel had a horrific back check. Um, Penguins are then down two to one. And then on the third goal, Teddy Wuger passes it right to Josh Bailey. 3-1 going into the second period. It, the game was potentially over at that point until the Penguins had that nice comeback. And then the fourth goal again, Brian Dumoulin misplays the puck in the defensive zone. Somehow does not get the right read on it. Casey DeSmith is deked out by another by another Josh Bailey goal, who's basically a Penguins killer at this point, despite having a dreadful season. It, it pucks in the back of the net. Just really bad defensive mishaps from the Penguins really doomed them in this game. Because you know, if it weren't for them just being stupid in their own zone, they win this game, and they probably win it in regulation, considering how they played in the second and third periods. Those last forty minutes are probably some of the best forty minutes of hockey I've seen the Penguins play. And about a week or week and a half now. Um, it turns out this team can turn it on when it wants to. And I'm going to leave you all with that you know, as we go into our next commercial break here. Um, just, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, um, I, I, I really like um, what Casey DeSmith did tonight, um, to, to, to say the least. So that wraps up this segment of the Locked On um, Penguins. Uh, uh, this, wow, I almost just totally... Screw that. I am literally logging into my email to get this thing ready here. I apologize um, for that. Any, Anyways, um, you can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why should you choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more from the cha- same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business to enjoy yourself first for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. You can go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. You can go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, and you can write Locked On in their How Do You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. Now, Remember, I posted a poll that asked you for your gut reaction, sports are art, or art is a sport. There was no other information that happened about, you know, two, three weeks ago. Sports are art actually won by a landslide, but with two votes for art is a sport, I think we might be on to something. Mattress Factory says to that, full disclosure, one of those votes was us. We're really happy someone agreed. DM us and we'll snag a beer of the game. So if you are the person that agreed with Mattress Factory and you listen to the show, DM them on social media, on their Twitter account, if you have Twitter, and they will buy you a beer at the game, of course, if you are legal uh, to drink, 21 and over, um, of course. All this comes from Mattress Factory, Pittsburgh's premier site-specific contemporary art installations museum. That's just a fancy way of saying actually immersive art. You can visit mattress.org slash gopens to get a free one-year membership to Mattress Factory when you buy tickets to the Penguins-Bruins game on April 21st. Remember, mattress.org slash go pins to get a free one-year membership to Mattress Factory when you buy tickets for the Penguins-Bruins game on April 21st. 
Welcome back to this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember, remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at Lowering Score Penguins. I think I just screwed up my name about five seconds ago. <laughs> Whatever. We're, we're going to roll right through it. Um, in terms of you know positive performances tonight, um, Danton Heinen got his 15th goal of the season. Um, you know The team was fully healthy coming in, minus an Evgeny Malkin suspension. Right now, um, I don't know if there is an injury update for Mike Sullivan. Oh, and well, I just got it for you all right now on Penguins Inside Scoop. Ross and Rodriguez are both sick with non-COVID illnesses. So again, a stomach bug just continues to ravage this team. It is basically about half of the team at this point that have been out due to the stomach bug. Mike Sullivan said, it seems like we've got some sort of bug that's going through our team. Guys are trying to play through it. These guys tried, but they couldn't finish the game. So yeah, a lot of these players, it looks like are not even 100%. Um, and also Mike Sullivan said, we've also had players over the last couple of weeks who have been sick that have played through it. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's probably just someone has diarrhea and they're just spreading it to, across the entire team. So, um, you know, no injuries, at least it's just some, you know, on COVID illnesses. I'm sure they'll have the day off tomorrow. Um, and, and, you know, we'll see if they play, um, on Tuesday, you know, maybe get some antibiotic or something for that. But Dan Hyden, again, 15th goal of the season. He's one away from tying his career high that he set with Boston a few years back. Um, if this team is fully healthy in the playoffs and if Kenny Malkin comes back from that suspension, which he obviously will, um, I, I don't think he's the guy to scratch. I know he can drive some people crazy. He misses some open nets, um, but he has that wicked release that you just can't replace in this lineup. Um, that was a hell of a shot um, off of that great pass from Kapanen. I'll get to him in just a second, but um, no, just you're, you're not replacing that um, in my opinion. He's he's been a really good depth signing for this team all year. Even if it's in a third or fourth line role, I know he's been on the fourth line a lot lately. Um, I'm not really too big of a fan of that. But, you know, he's still playing fine. And, you know, if, if one of your fourth liners has 15 goals, you're doing something right. Am I right, guys? So I, I'm fine with him staying in the lineup. Speaking of Kasperi Kapanen, I thought he played pretty well tonight. Um, that was a really slick pass um, to Heinen um, to get the Penguins back in that game a few minutes into the second period. Um, just, you know, really underrated there. You know, his playmaking ability um, has been better as of late, I know his goal scoring is not there. I understand that. But, you know, his play, you know, with the puck in a passing capacity or, you know, even defensively has been a lot better this year compared to last year. So I'm definitely going to take the good with the bad, I think, in that situation. Jake Gensel, he was awesome tonight. I mean, he was robbed of a hat trick twice. Um, <clears throat> you know, Jeff Carter stole his uh, hat trick goal on the power play that made it four to four in the third period. And then in overtime it has a beautiful deflection, literally five feet from the net and it's gloved by Sorokin. And I'm just like, of course he makes that save because he always has to make all these great saves um, against the Penguins. Um, had two other goals. He's almost, he's closing in on 40 goals um, at this point. And, you know, he was just, you know, at the right place at the right time, especially for that first one, you know, he's able to kind of sneak down a little bit, bury a rebound. And then, you know, that, Hit the game tying one, <clears throat> excuse me, was kind of a little bit of a um, a squeaker by Sorokin. Don't usually see him give up those kind of goals. Um, just squeaked by him five hole, but you know, <clears throat> it's the Penguins actually shooting the puck in those situations where they were overpassing at times. You know, during this game, and you know, I just I can't stress enough. You know, when you're playing a good goalie like that, just shoot it and see what happens. So they were able to get four goals past Sorokin tonight. I know they came up a little bit short, but you know. I still think there were a lot of times where the team was not shooting enough and they could have won this game in overtime and regulation. Cindy Crosby, I thought he played a really good game tonight outside of the shootout. Um, you know, ho-hum, I think, for him at this point. So that, I think, does it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I really can't think of – I was just checking my notes here. Uh, <clears throat> nothing really else I'm talking about with this game. It was obviously very chaotic. Um, the Penguins get another shot at these guys on Thursday. I'm happy with the point. They pay, they probably should have won the game if it weren't for that, just, you know, vomiting all over themselves in the overtime in the shootout. And I will say, <clears throat> excuse me, we almost got the hilarious ending where Jason Zucker almost put it into his own net when the Penguins are getting the power play. That would have been the most, the funniest, but the most saddest way to lose a game. And funny enough, um, the Penguins, I did not know this was a rule. Um, if the goalie was not coming out 
because of the delayed penalty and the puck went in, the Penguins would have lost their point. But because DeSmith was coming out for it, even if the puck went in, I know the Penguins would have lost the game, which would have been hilarious and sad, but they still would have gotten the point. But had he not done that and had the puck would have gone in and it with an empty net where he wasn't leaving it on a, on a delayed uh, penalty, the Penguins would have not gotten their point. So that's a little fun fact I will leave with you all um, there. Again, Penguins get another crack at these guys on Thursday. I have a full game recap episode coming up right for you all um, probably on Friday after I have my episode with Adam Gretz on uh, Thursday. So another episode coming for you all on Wednesday. Um, obviously, there will still be much to talk about with this team. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast, and I will talk with you all uh, tomorrow.